John, you were just telling us uh, before we hit record here that you've had as much turnover this season as you've ever had on a roster, but it wasn't because you lost guys to the portal. You're just old guys finally got too old to keep playing college basketball. How difficult has this process been and how rewarding is it to, you know, kind of have that level of success with these guys that have been in the program year after year after year? Well, I think a little bit of both, Rob, honestly, like, you know, we've, you know, obviously had a great run. Five-year run was the greatest from a winning percentage standpoint in the history of Akron basketball. Had a really special senior class that won three championships um, and accomplished a lot of incredible things. Uh, but it's also fun, too, to work with this new group. You mentioned it, nine newcomers, five transfers, four freshmen out of our 16 guys. And so that part's been uh, challenging. But at the same time, it's been a lot of fun. We've got good dudes. Uh, that are working really hard to try to figure it out. Um, you know, obviously we have a long way to go in terms of figuring out leadership. We relied on those guys who just finished quite a bit over the last few years. So I'm trying to get the guys that have returned, you know, whether it's Nate Johnson or Shema Scott or Tavari Johnson to step up, Amani Lyles, those guys to step up and lead, uh, both not only by example, but by voice. Uh, that's a little bit different for them maybe than it was previously, but we need them to do that. We're work in progress there. And then obviously, as I always say, you know, Mike Tyson used to say, you don't really know what's going on until you get hit in the mouth, paraphrasing, obviously. And right now everybody's in a good mood because we haven't played a game and nobody's earned any minutes. So, you know, everybody thinks they're playing probably and everybody thinks they're playing X number of minutes. And obviously, as we know, that's not reality. So, you know, can we still stay together and have cohesiveness and chemistry and, you know, be about the greater good when maybe an individual guy or two doesn't get exactly what they want? You know, that remains to be seen as well. But from a talent perspective and depth perspective, it's the deepest team we've had since I've been here. Um, really? We could certainly play nine or ten guys is what I see right now every night, which is a little unique. We're usually eight to nine. Um, and then we've got a lot of firepower shooting the ball. Uh, our defense right now stinks and needs to be a lot better than what it is right now um, to get to where it's been at the top of the league or near the top of the league for the last five years. We have a long way to go. I call it L-A-E, life after Enrique. And uh, what do yeah. you miss most? I mean, you look around and, you, you know, I, I got a chance to talk to him and like that kid is the best. Like, you're not going to yeah. find a better kid, player, just everything about him you just love. Like, what do you miss most right now? Is it the fact that a lot of these new guys didn't get a chance to watch him and, and kind of learn those the habits that made him so good? Well, first I'll tell you this. I was at the Pacers training camp this week, and I told him I was going to be on with you guys at field of 68 and he wanted me to remind goodman in particular that you promised him a job when his career's Done. over so he said make sure you get that validated and stamped with jeff for me because he did he really enjoyed being on with you jeff you guys obviously had a great episode there um you're right though it's obviously he's a great player but what you miss is great student bachelor's master's uh was on student athlete council genuinely cared about other people never had a bad day always played with motor never had a personal agenda cared about winning more than anything else uh when he took the court um was a great teammate you know we've got a couple of the guys that have returned have mentioned to me at different times that he's the greatest teammate they've ever had so you're right, it's challenging. And it's not the basketball piece, which obviously is significant. He's a great player, but it's the other things that go along with him. And, uh, you know, the newcomers unfortunately didn't get to see all that. They hear about it from me and others randomly and frequently. And that's where I'm kind of counting on guys like Nate and Shema and Tavari and Amani to be what we call Akron guys, because that's what he was, a guy that gave everything he had every day to everything he did. Um, and so obviously leading by example in that regard and using their voice, I think is a huge thing for our team's development. Uh, it sounds like Enrique Freeman and um, Jeff Gordon are exact polar opposites. 
Uh, I don't think Enrique, you know, everything you just said about Enrique is the exact opposite of what people say about Jeff Goodman. Um, I, I want to ask you about some of the guys who got transferring in. Some of the the it feels like you're you're West Virginia light this year, right? You got Seth Wilson, yeah. you got Josiah Harris, you got James Conquo, uh, who was at North Carolina last year but played at West Virginia before. Um, is there value in having these three guys coming in that all kind of have experience with each other? Like it's a little bit, it feels like it might be a little bit easier to kind of get everyone to know each other when like a group of the new guys all already know each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it certainly can be helpful. You know, it wasn't intentional by any means. It just worked out that way. In the case of Seth and, and Josiah, they're local products. Uh, one played at Richmond Heights and the other one played at St. Vincent, St. Mary High School and Lorraine High School here locally. And we knew them and had recruited them when they were underclassmen prior to going to West Virginia. So we had a relationship there. Uh, James, uh, we did not initially until we got involved in the recruiting process after he entered the portal. And, and um, you know, obviously we had a great sell there with Enrique leaving. And, you know, we had Amani returning who's really stepped up and is playing well. And then James obviously has hit the ground running. So I like what I'm seeing there at that spot. Um, but yeah, their familiarity for sure. And then the other West Virginia angle is our freshman was West Virginia's Mr. Basketball, and he's actually from Morgantown. And so he knew all three of those guys as well. So it's really, you know, four of those guys had a great familiarity with each other, uh, kind of with that connection relative to West Virginia. Hey, Gross, tell me, tell me about the time that you got confused for uh, Jim Furyk uh, when you're on the road. <laughs> That was classic. I was the head coach in Illinois. I was in Chicago. Actually, my wife was with me. It was not a business trip. We were just going up to Chicago to have a good weekend and hang out in the city. And we went to eat at a restaurant. And this guy walks up to me, Rob, and says, are you who I think you are? Well, obviously, at that point, I'm the head coach in Illinois. So I'm assuming that's what he's alluding to. And I said, well, I'm not I'm not sure. You know, who do you think I am? I said, maybe. And he goes, Jim Furyk. <laughs> I go, no, I'm not Jim Furyk. And he looked so disappointed. Uh, he said, well, it's too bad. He said, I'm so sorry. I apologize, you sir, and walked away. And I, yeah, that wasn't Jim Furyk. Them, I'm only the Illinois head coach. That's all I am. I'm not Jim Furyk. You, there is a resemblance there, though, clearly a resemblance. Yeah, it's got to be the hairline for sure. And uh, uh, Jim, would, I'm starts. sure if he knew that, would claim that he is uh, – Certainly a lot better looking than I am. So it has to be the hairline. Uh, I'm I'm I looking at a picture of him right now. The the only thing is he he looks like he's a little bit older than you. Like you shouldn't feel great about that. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't looked at a picture of him lately, but uh, you're you're right. So may, maybe it's okay. uh not as insulting to him. I guess it could be to me based on what you're saying there, Rob, looking at his picture. I got one more for you. Uh, tell me about the time that, uh, and I know you're pretty competitive. I think the staff did like a race or a run or something. And I think you wound up in a boot at the end of that run. <laughs> I don't know. If it, well, we were out running and uh, Dustin Ford, who still thinks it's funny to this day, we were on, uh, I think, Wolf Ledges, which is a, a street here locally near campus. And I was running right behind him and there was a huge rock. Now he would claim that my peripheral vision should have been able to see this rock. He did not call it out. I stepped right on it, cranked my ankle, swells up pretty good. And yes, I did end up uh, in a boot. We'll blame Dustin. He's easy to blame. He's been with me the entire time I've been a head coach at Ohio, Illinois, and now here. So we're definitely blaming uh, him. It won't be the first time. <laughs> well, listen, man, last thing I got for you, just if you guys are going to continue the success, continue to to be in the mix for winning MAC titles this season, um, what is the one thing, the most important thing that has to happen for this group? Well, I think our leadership, we've got to find that. Um, and I think we got to find it organically. You know, I've learned that over time. You can't just say, oh, you know, Rob, you're the captain. You know, that's not the way it works. It has to be earned. It has to happen organically throughout the group. Um, it's up to us to try to create an environment where that gets facilitated and grows. So I think that's a huge deal. Um, 
the coaches, we've tried in practice to be a little bit more quiet and let them lead drills as, as much as we can because we know when game action starts, we're not out there playing. They are. You know, who's going to take control of the huddles? Who's going to make sure we have a tight huddle? Who's going to communicate to the bench then to their teammates on court? You know, how what's that going to look like? And we're not where we need to be there yet. I think that's the real key. That And our guys know. I mean, we've been – one or two defensively every year over that five-year span. They know that you have to guard, uh, and that's what's allowed us to be consistent. I do think the biggest thing for us and for people outside of our program they'll see is a, is a heavy style change offensively. You know, without Freeman in the low post, who was third in the country in points per possession behind Zach Eady and DJ Burns, you know, are we going to throw it down there certainly in mismatch situations and some? Yes but not nearly as much. So you're going to see us playing a lot faster, a lot quicker, a lot more possessions, a lot more threes, a lot more dribble drive, a lot more pick and rolls, gets, zooms, different uh, than maybe what we've done in the past because uh, I think we'll be a little bit more unpredictable uh, where we controlled the game a little bit more the last couple of years as we should have, making sure that the ball got touched inside uh, by Freeman and some of the other guys. So that will be a different um, – look for us stylistically but at the end of the day i think it's going to come down to our leadership and it's going to come down to guys embracing their role and then our ability to defend we'd like to thank jim furick for joining us here on mac media day here on the field <laughs> 68 coming up next we're going to hear from nate johnson uh akron's veteran the only returning starter on the akron roster that is coming up next All right. And th from from Reek, what I mean, he, again, I we talked about it with Gross. Like he was special in every way. Like, give me the one thing that you're gonna take that he he kind of taught you, or you just from watching him. Uh, just to play hard every day. Like no matter what circumstances it was, he was he always played hard. Even if we were like walking through stuff, he was loud. He was talking. Like even if we had a short practice, Reek. And still went as hard as he could. So just to like just play hard no matter what. Where has your game developed? Not just your leadership, but on on, on the court. What have you gotten better at this off season? Where have you taken a step forward? Uh, I would say more of just being able to shoot off the dribble and just attacking the basket more. As I, I'm, I'm athletic, I would say. So I would say using my athleticism more this year. How how much have you worked on? And I don't know what you can do to work on it, uh, but Gross said, like, we're being quieter as a staff now in huddles and everything like that. You're kind of the guy that I think everybody's going to look towards for leadership. Um, is that something that has come to you naturally over the course of your, your life and your career? Or is this something that you've had to kind of think about a little bit more because you're that, that one returning veteran? Uh, I would say over, I say over the course of my life has been uh, just something I had to think of. But now being in this program has kind of been, you know, after seeing the guys before me do it and lead me a little bit. So now it's like kind of easier to go to the younger guys or the new guys since I know the system more than anybody here. So it's just, it's a little easier for me since it's not hard for me to understand what's going on. But I know coming in as a new guy is, I've been there before, especially my freshman year. So I know how how it is, how fast it could be, and just trying to learn. So I know I got to be the one to, like, help in and then step up. You got a whole bunch of new faces. You got five transfers coming in. You got, uh, I believe it's four freshmen coming in. Um, what have you seen from them, and who's impressed you over the course of the spring, the summer, and, and kind of the, the start of fall practice? Uh, I would say we've seen a lot of – I would say just a lot of good energy, a lot of positivity, just they come in even though they mess up. They still try to keep going at it and just try to learn. Like we got a lot of guys who are coachable and want to learn. And I was honestly, everybody's impressed me. I mean, I mean, I know at different at other schools, it's kind of hard to play a different role. And now you come here and, and like it's a different change, a change of scenery. Especially we're changing our offense, so it's not how we played how we last year, playing a little faster. So I know it's new for some guys. So just every every all the new guys has been interesting. 
just learning everybody. And so it's been it's been good. So I, I know you're upset. Everybody is to see Enrique go, but in a way, you know, you're not so upset. Let's be honest. You're gonna get more touch. You're gonna get more touches. You're gonna play faster, which is what a guard wants. Um, how yeah. much with the playing style now changing? How exciting is that for you? It's very exciting. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, passing the ball into the post and knowing that you know Enrique's gonna score most of the time is is very you know easy, but. I'll say now is more just just free roam. You never know what's gonna happen, especially with our offense now. It's just faster. You get the rebound and go. It's no stopping, no looking at coach for a play. So it's just it, as you said, for a guard is is better for us. Not better, but you know, more fun. more fun for us. More fun. Yeah, more fun. What's been the hardest part about the the amount of turnover that you guys have had on the roster this year? I would say more just trying to get all the trust together and just trying to bond with guys. You never know, you know, what happened last year. But just, um, you know, last year you had a whole bunch of guys coming back, so you already knew everybody on the roster. You knew everybody's tendencies, what they like to do, just hanging out. So I would say more of just figuring out things to do off the court and then carrying that chemistry on the court. Like, it's, it's just, just learning people. That's all it is. Hey, Rob, did you know that Nate is a huge Power Rangers fan? Did you know that? Oh, man. I did not. Huge. He did, I did not. He just got a tattoo recently. True? Yeah, I just got a uh, Power Rangers leg sleeves. All right. You got it. Like, might, might be more from Power Rangers. But... I'm not a Power Rangers guy, so you got to explain this to me a little bit. Okay. Okay. Explain. You want me to explain the tattoo or just Power Rangers in general? The tattoo. Yeah, yeah. The tattoo. Okay, so the front of my leg, see, look, the tattoo came from, I used to watch the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, like, all the time as a kid. So then I was just, a couple of years ago, I was like, I feel like I should, like, you know, put a mirror to that, especially after Tommy, one of the, like, Power Rangers who was just in, he was in most of the Power Rangers, he was, like, one of the lead guys, and he passed away. So I still got to add him to the piece, but... I got, like, the main movie that he was in, and I got the front of my leg is all the Power Rangers. And then it has like Mighty Morphin and Morphin Time in the middle of my leg. And then the back of my leg is like all the villains. Like I have like- How long did it take? Five, How long did the, the, the tattoo take? 32 hours altogether. What? <laughs> no. 32 hours? I didn't sit the whole 32 hours though. It was three sessions, but all together 32 hours. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. I was, what, at, hey. So, it, it was three like ten hour long sessions. What do you do that? Time? Are you like reading a book? Are you are you just you got like Netflix on your phone or something? What are you doing? Well, I would say the first. If, actually, I did two two twelve. Well, my last session was like twelve to fourteen hours. Then my first session was twelve, and then the second was like six seven. Honestly, I was just on my phone and just sitting there holding something because it was hurting. I tried to I try to just stay locked in on my phone and watch something or call somebody to talk it talk me through while I'll be able to get through all this pain. But what was the most painful part? The back of the knee, I'm Definitely guessing. Back of the knee. Easily the back of the <laughs> knee. That that hurt for about a week. It was still hurting after it. I was like, yeah. I don't know if I I don't ever I'll never get a tattoo after this. I was like, I'm done after that. No more. <laughs> yeah. So you're not getting one on the other leg then, huh? On oh, other leg, never. I might finish the rest of my Power Ranger sleeve, but after that, I'm, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> that right, I got one more for you. I got one more for you. I'm going to put you on the spot here. All right, I'm going to put you in the spot. I hear you do an incredible John Gross impression. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you look. See, like, if you guys know that you've been watching the game, he goes out on the timeout and say, you know, we're having a bad little stretch and teams start to come back. He does a he does a thing where he walks over the court and he does a timeout over his head and he, like, walks in the middle of the court. But I would say I have his, like, his voice down a little bit. I look how he gets, he gets a little squeaky when he gets the – all right, hold on. Let me think of something. Fellas, fellas, we got to be able to move the ball, fellas. Come on. What are we doing? I look like Jim Furyk in his voice. <laughs> so the last, I'm gonna do one more. This, this is the last one. You can't tell me I did this one. 
in the timeouts, he sits, he sits and he looks. He looks in the crowd before he walks up to the group. He like does a little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, the good thing, Nate, Nate, you got playing time this year. So whatever you just <laughs> did, like you're good. You're good. He's not going to be able to bench oh, you. Man, he's my game. He's my game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, Nate. This has been this has been fun. Uh, we're going to have to get you on for more impressions here uh, throughout the season. So whenever yeah, something crazy that, happens, we're going to get you on to get to to get these impressions done. Appreciate you being here. We'll be back with more Mac Media Day on the Field of 68 coming right up.